want to know where the money's coming from. And if they've done nothing wrong, listen, we're not accusing them. If they're solving world peace, that's great. But our opinion, in my opinion, in my investigation so far, is more than half of these people are bankers. And this is an international banking money program who's getting the trend and the feel around the world. And it's about money. And I think they're rubbing shoulders with the shakers and bakers. And it's for that purpose. So we're just trying to do is see if there's been any money going in here. If there is, we want to bring it to light. And if so, where's the accompanying documentation and reports to our government? So that's basically where we are. I think it's very significant. Keep in mind, you can protest it every year, and it's been protested every year. We've never really gotten their kitchen. We're trying to go that step further. I'm recommending to every country, knowing that Portugal is one country here, that look at the availability and access of laws in your own country to pursue the same type of agenda. Look and see if your country has put any money into Bilderberg. Tax dollars, that is. So talking about it don't make much sense. We would have talked about the Demony case for years. It would have been put to death. So I want you to imagine, in closing, a fellow who convicted for mass murder as the infamous Ivan the Terrible, who's on death row, and the congressman brings him home. The Israeli Supreme Court let him go. Why? Because our Freedom of Information Act request was completely denied because the Demonia case was classified. So they were able to get around it. But we found one person who was tried at Treblinka by the name of Fyodor Fedorenko. And I foiled Fedorenko. And bingo. I got all the documents that our Justice Department had. They knew this guy wasn't even Ivan. You talk about a shame. So think now. They're very sophisticated. They're very smart. We want to know who's behind it. We want to know if there's tax dollars involved. And you've got to be sharp and you've got to go at them. And it's got to be a surgical strike. We think we're there. And we think what type of work that Mark's doing. Pete Papa Heracles is also a senior correspondent. American Free Press, part of the investigation. So we're the investigation arm. He's the press arm. And uh, we're proud of the work he's done taking over here with, from Jim Tucker. We're so proud of Jim. Thanks, Jim Trafficant, the other big Jim in the Bilderberg investigation. I would add that last year AFP reported on the 990 form of these private groups that take donations from some of the Bilderberg participants to fund their uh, operations. So this is an excellent way to follow up on that, a one-two punch, and we'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching wherever you're viewing this. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Jim, Jim what, what's your opinion on that uh, up there we're seeing the formation of a uh, shadow world government? I'm not so sure it's a shadow government. My own opinion from the investigation so far, as a congressman I never got too much involved. I had a lot of other things on my plate. You don't do all and everything. And I heard about Bilderberg. I followed Jim Tucker. And I think Jim Tucker brought Bilderberg to the attention of the world and look what it's ended up in now. And now we're looking at it and say, who are you? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? And that's legitimate to ask. I'm not accusing them of anything, but I looked over a period of years at the membership of these conferences. I think they're very top heavy with the most powerful and wealthiest bankers in the world. And I think it's nothing more then these bankers looking for megatrends, where things are going, what's happening in respective countries as far as their portfolios are concerned. I think it's a business move and I think the diversion is to bring in the peace and the science people. I don't think, you know, they're talking about it. I don't think they're interested in the anti-Americanism that they first talked about that was existing in Western Europe. I don't think they really care about that. Because I think in the early, in the mid-50s, I think most of the Western Europe was satisfied that America helped save Western Europe. So I don't trust what they're doing, but I think it's these bankers, I think they're smart. They're rubbing shoulders with future presidents, prime ministers, finance ministers. Keep in mind, if they're not bankers, how many represent the finance apparatus of these respective countries? And what better way to get information? It's informal and secretive, and by the way, if no one can listen to us and if we don't have to publish anything, none of you people can in fact 
take fodder with their comments. You ever hear anything like that? Look, if there's public money involved, you should be standing inside watching this damn thing, and they should be more or less not transparent. It should be perhaps open to the public for what they're doing. So I think these bankers have a banking conference in secret, getting all the personal little details, certainly financial, that concerns them. And uh, I don't know how the hell they're getting away with it, quite frankly. So maybe, maybe it will come to a halt. I'll say this, the little bit I've been involved, they now have a website. A few short years ago, they denied their existence. They're getting worried. Now, we have announced at American Free Press on an editor's roundtable almost 10 days ago that we were going to proceed with a surgical inquiry, a legal surgical inquiry. Since then, they not only have opened up to a website, they sort of justified why they're secretive and why they do things and even give us some information about how and where their money comes from. From a group that denied existence to now justifying their existence, I think they've gone the full gambit, and I credit you, and I really credit Jim Tucker now being cared for by Mark Anderson at bringing this all about. Now with Alex and other people from around the globe, look what's happened. They've got a spotlight on it. Jim, I think this is the first uh, one where they've allowed public protest, is, is that correct? And um, yeah, um, and uh, David Icke and Alex Jones were here yesterday. Would you agree with them that this could be a turning point? This could be the Bilderberg that turns. I think turns it they recognise that their game of exclusivity has come to an end, and they're going to have to look at the element of accountability, like any other fringe government activity. Look, when you have people representing government involved with banking apparatus, you're looking at something different. Now, when you see Federal Reserve Board Chairman, when you see the major banks of the world, when you see the banks from respective nations, you see the political figures from those respective nations. They're all rubbing shoulders. What would be the reason for such a conference other than the banks want to know what the hell is going on it look like a war over there see now some of the protesters here believe they're behind the war and they set the war quite frankly I don't think that I think they're looking for what's going to happen and how do we participate financially how do we make the damn money out of this I think we're looking at a money apparatus that uses all of these other peace and scientists and educators from Harvard as the diversionary tactic to make it look like a broad-based help the world type of program. I don't think so. I think it's a banking program and I think it's predicated on their growth and their, their money situation. Do you think, do you think given that uh, countries are indebted to central, the central banking system, which is kind of a private enterprise in itself, which uh, includes some of those members up there, do you think that gives them any leverage over, over governments? Well, what was the old saying? You know, we don't care who runs the country if uh, we handle the money. <laughs> Think about that. Why, in a remote secretive operation with so much activity, would Federal Reserve Chairman spend three or four days? Prime Ministers, royalty. Who would be strong enough to pull them together? So in looking at it, American Free Press, our group, we looked at it and we believe the common denominator is the bank. We believe the bankers put this together and we believe that, hey, I don't know if I should be discussing this at this point because we're not taking off on it, but did you know that several weeks before Bilderberg, Google, the big internet giant, had their conference here and they had security and they vacated the entire hotel and one of the issues is a sticky issue of taxation with the United Kingdom I find it somewhat more than coincidence that Eric Schmidt the CEO is also here today at Bilderberg what is the next big thing in the horizon 
in the tax world, folks. Is the internet going to be taxed? Now, they could talk about, you know, the crisis in the Middle East and Africa. I guarantee you they're looking at these types of dynamics. And I don't think it's any coincidence that that thing was held here shortly before. And then you will see Google and Schmidt and these guys sitting down with UK leaders. And you will probably see some corresponding support, albeit not official through any resolution. But the word gets out. And I, I think that's a part of the agenda here. I think part of the agenda is the Internet issue. And it's going to be discussed severely here, very significantly. So I think you're on the grounds of something quite unusual. And I think the numbers here and the persistent attempt to provide some transparency has forced them now to be somewhat accommodating. But let me say this. I looked at and I followed the mainstream press on it. They referred usually and mostly in the beginning to the protesters as somewhat malcontents is someone conspiracy theorist and the one that got my attention the most was they labeled the protesters anti-capitalists now let me ask you something in your own mind what is an anti-capitalist were they afraid to use the word communist they had technically labeled this organization a group of communists because you're questioning this powerful group who can say they've never denied the press because they have the CEO of the Washington Post and all these powerful people. But I ask you this, for all of this mainstream media who's falling on their sword to protect their First Amendment right of freedom of the press, why have they voluntarily surrendered it to this banking group? You see, and these are the types of things Hopefully now they're on the agenda. It's changed. Bilderberg has a different problem now. Bilderberg is going to be scrutinized from the inside out. Their relationship to the government is going to be exposed. Now if the government just throws it in file 13, or if the government takes the position of classified, if it's classified and so important, then this isn't a social gathering, is it? We're going to hear one way or the other. So I doubt if there's any money from the Department of Agriculture. But how did the Secretary of State get here? Was he paid for by his own campaign fund? Did he have a slush fund in the State Department? Did he pay for it out of his own bank account? How did he get here? Who authorized him to come here? As far as America is concerned, who selects the American participants? Who does that? Does the White House have a say? I doubt it was going anywhere. We, we submitted a FOIA on the White House as well and the Office of Management and Budget. Where's the money? Who sends these people? And if they're going to hide behind secrecy, what's the legal apparatus for them to do same? If they legally can do that, show us, show us the, the law, how they can do that or why it justifies for this venue. So that's where we are. You have uh, some real developments now coming on Bilderberg. It's changing. And hopefully, what I would like to see is I'd like to see every nation. Are you listening, Portugal? I'd like to see every nation at least develop a policy of friends to the Freedom of Information Act taking place in America, number one. And number two, to attempt to implement something same in their own country if there is some some mechanism to provide for that. I think that's an intelligent way to go. I mean, we're not calling them names. But I assure you this, the press didn't put those names on you. Bilderberg is fighting back, and they're fighting back through the press. I bet you that's Bilderberg trying to back you off or trying to paint you with a brush so the people won't take you very seriously. So I think as long as everybody is chipper, Everything's fine. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.